Now for the Miami Marlins, Johnny Cueto will make his Miami Marlins debut this evening on the 15th anniversary of his major league debut. Max Kepler leads off. 2-1 pitch, a swing and a blast. Right center field and deep. Back it goes. Deep it goes. And gone. Lead off home run, Kepler. His first hit of the year is a leadoff shot to right center. And it's 1-0 Twins. I believe the last time the Twins were here, 2019, that last game, Kepler began that game with a leadoff home run to right. His first hit a big fly, 1-0 start. And now Correa. Popped up. Good thing they opened the roof. That might have hit the roof. Segura with the catch, one away. That'll bring up Buxton. DHing fourth straight game. The 1-0 pitch, line to left field, hit well. De La Cruz with a play, though. He'll reach out and make the catch on a line drive. Shy of the warning track for out number two. And number nine, Trevor Larnick, playable in right field for Garcia, who started back. Now he comes in, reaches up and makes the catch. And the side is retired and the inning is over, but not before Max Kepler hits his 14th leadoff home run of his career. Tyler Malley, ready for his season debut. Just four starts with the Twins a year ago after the trade from Cincinnati. Malley bothered by a shoulder injury. His season ended early in September. So Rise is leading off the bottom of the first inning and he just got called for a pitch clock violation. The count is nothing and one on Arise, who is facing his former team for the first time tonight. Left field, Larnick crosses into foul territory and he makes the catch. There's one out. Here's Jorge Soler, the Marlins designated hitter. On the ground to third base, bobbled by Miranda. Correa tries to recover and they get him at first base. Good having uh, friends in high places or at least right next to you if you're Miranda over there third. Two out single for Garrett Cooper. Jazz is off to a two for 13 start with a homer. Up the line right to Gallo and that'll wrap up the first inning with Cooper left aboard. It's one to nothing. Twins have two on nobody out. Little rally right here with a walk and a single and now you bring up the guy who had the big day yesterday. As he swings and sends it to right field and deep. Back it goes and gone. Gallo does it again. He's homered now in three straight at bats. Another three run homer. Four nothing twins and still nobody out here in the second. Cueto only gave up 15 home runs last year and he saved the White Sox early. They were hurt by injuries that starting staff a year ago. Cueto saved that staff with some great starts. Stallings wants to come out and have a chat and they're looking into the dugout like we need a manager and a trainer here as well. I guess uh, Jacob must have saw something in uh, Johnny that uh, prompted him to call out the, the trainer and uh, Skip and Mel Stoudemire Jr. Johnny Cueto is walking off the mountain and across the foul line with the athletic trainer as he'll exit the far side of the Marlins dugout. He tosses a baseball down the steps. There goes Johnny Cueto and his night is over. So Buxton's at first base one out. Here's Larnick scalded down the line fair by inches. Buxton flying around second. He's going to head home. And Larnick will round second and dig for third. And the throw is not in time. Trevor Larnick with an RBI triple. And it's five to nothing. This is up to him whether he thinks he can make it to third or not. That'll go down to his first major league triple. Here's Jose Miranda. The Marlins infield is in even though they're down five to nothing. They don't want this game to get away. Base hit left field. Miranda drives in Larnick. And the Twins are enjoying an early inning romp here in Miami. A sweeper this ball running away from him but he stays through it and with the infield in he's able to just dunk it in the outfield and drive in another run. First and third the batter's going to be Carlos Correa. Correa 0 for 2. Two fly outs. See if they can score another run or two here first. Fly ball who hit well into left center field. That ball's not going to be caught. That's going to one hop the wall. Vasquez scored. They're going to wave around Farmer the throw to the plate and not in time. And that's a double two RBIs, and the Twins now lead eight to nothing over the Miami Marlins. Boy, hanging breaking ball, and Correa didn't miss it. Just three hits for this Miami ball club, and really, Gallo stretched out there, couldn't get it. I believe they're going to give him a base hit on that. They are a one out infield base hit. We've got to be able to develop innings and string hits together, and now would be one of those spots. Strike three, and he is rung up. Boy, Birdie can't believe it. That was a good three or four inches off the plate. But when you start hitting your spot like that, you're going to get the call. And here is Luis Arise with two on. He's going to win his batting title the, tomorrow. They'll be presented with that award. 
And this one into right field going to get down for a base hit. De La Cruz rounding third. Luis Arise with an RBI single, and the Marlins are on the board. Well, this that's the guy they need to get to the dish a little bit more often, Paul, with runners in the scoring position, because we do know uh, that he will put the ball in play, and he will put the ball in play with some authority. And here's the power that yes. you were talking yeah, he, about. Here, here's the here's the moment where if the Marlins are going to get back in this game, that this is the guy that, that could do it. Strike three, looking on the outside corner. And again, painted on the outside corner. A couple of strikeouts. They do get on the board. For Carlos Correa, that's his second hit of the night in his most recent trip to the plate. And here's Larnick. Picked up his first big league triple. Third inning tonight. High fly. Deep center field. Chisholm going back. He's at the wall, and it is gone. A home run. Larnick on a lefty-lefty matchup. Clobbers a home run to center field. Well, he keeps swinging the bat the way he is, right-handed, left-handed. You're not going to be able to take him out of the lineup. And took it out to the deepest part of the ballpark. And Chisholm made a great effort on this. Looked like he might even have hit off the top of the wall and bounced out. But a strong spring. He's healthy. He's hitting in the four spot. And he's swinging the bat like a guy who wants to be in the middle of the order and belongs in the middle of the order. It's been impressive to watch his start this year. Welcome back. Well, we have uh, reached that part of the program where the Marlins have a, a position player pitching and it's Jacob Stallings. My guess is he's calling his own game. I would think so. <laughs> Why wouldn't he? <laughs> it's the second position player I've seen pitch today. Luis Gourmet. It's Ryan Jeffers pinch hits for Byron Buxton. That was at uh, a cool 40. 40. And they registered as a slider. Slider. Yeah, well. Runs up 74. Look at this. Mixing the speeds. That 75 looked like a 100 to Farmer. <laughs> and there's the slow one. Jeffers swings, hammers. Left center field. Back it goes. Deep it goes. And way out of here. Ryan Jeffers launches to left center field. His first of the year. The Twins have hit four homers tonight. And now lead by 10. It's an 11-1 game. Bottom nine for Miami Twins lead 11 to 1. And the Marlins haven't been in the game since the second inning. A rise to center field. Taylor is there. And the Twins have started this season with a four game winning streak. 